building a server into Obsidian feels somehow illegal. It isn't technically against any rules or anything like that, but it does feel like you're casting some kind of dark magic spell when you're adding a server into Obsidian. There were a lot of hacks that needed to be done, and at the end of the day, it still doesn't fully work, but it is technically possible to add an Express.js server to Obsidian that runs independently. The first thing that you're going to want to do for Obsidian v1.0.3, when this video was recorded, is to install Express.js version 4.15.5. This is very important. I'm not sure why it's important, but it is. If you use the latest version of Express, you'll get this really weird require stream error that isn't really well documented on the internet, and it's just easier to avoid that. Next, you're going to want to make a new file outside of your main.ts file. I called mine server.ts. I will say that this whole server project I didn't even know was possible until I saw it done by the very popular advanced slides plugin on the community plugin section. So if you need the inspiration from that, I would go to the source and check it out there. Once we have all our imports correctly imported, we are going to create a class. Again, this class is called reveal server in the code that you're seeing in front of you. The reason that I named it that was because that's what the advanced slides server called it, but I guess you could call it anything you want. This is TypeScript. This is a TypeScript class. Just do what you need to do. The important two lines that we're going to talk about are the underscore app, which reveals an express.application type, and the port that we're going to be running this on, which in this case is 15.299. In addition, we're going to be taking a look at this private underscore server, which is the server import from the HTTP class. In our constructor, we're going to want to set up our port to the port that we specified above, in this case 15.299. The reason that I set it to 15.299 is because this particular app that I'm working in uh, is connecting to Spotify, and the Spotify Alpha plugin uses 15.298, but feel free to put this on any port number. There are a few reserved port numbers on different operating systems like Mac and Linux, so make sure to know which ports are reserved already on your computer to avoid potential bugs. After that, we're going to instantiate our app with this dot underscore app equals express parentheses. Now we get to something a little bit more exciting. We get to set up our first endpoint within express within Obsidian. It's kind of a little bit inception-y. So what we're going to need to do isn't like a regular express app. We're actually going to need to get this which in this case is this, this, this being the reference to the class. We're going to need to get our underscore app that we created above, and then we're going to use dot get, which is an HTTP method, and then do our regular express stuff. In this case, we're just sending hello world. You can do post, you can do put, you can do all of the different endpoints. I'm only going to show this one here just so you can get up and running with the server in Obsidian if you are trying to do such a thing. Next, we're going to instantiate our this dot underscore server, which in this case is going to be from the HTTP class, remember from above. And we are going to call this dot underscore app, and we're going to set it to listen on our local host, which in this case is 127.0.0.1. And then we are going to have an error that's going to make a notice that says when a port is already occupied, this notice is important to end users and I wouldn't really get rid of it. Jumping over to our main file, we're gonna need to do four things to get our server running. The first, we are going to import the server class that we just exported from our work and server.ts. Next, we're going to make it a class variable, in this case, private reveal server of type reveal server. Next, we're going to create a new instance of our server you can see in this case that I'm importing client ID and client secret. This is only really specific to my app. You probably won't have this exported in your own, but you can pass in any object to the server class, which is important if you want to pass in different settings and stuff from your user. The next thing is that I set the port down there. I made another option for users to choose their own ports on their own computers. 
Um, this is just something that, you know, is good to think about if, you know, people are power users and they have their own specific ports that they set for things. Giving them the option is good. Finally, we set this dot reveal server dot start, which starts our server whenever the main thread of Obsidian is loaded. And finally, but no less important, on unload, we're going to call this dot reveal server dot stop which will stop our server when Obsidian is unloaded. This prevents zombie threads and zombie servers from sitting on your end users computers and is very important. So I would also make sure to add this. <laughs> Working on this particular project and trying to conduct black magic within Obsidian, which again somehow feels illegal, but I'm not sure why has really kind of taught me a lot about the importance of frustration in the trial and error process. You know, a lot of the tactics that I was using to get this server to work were stuff that I was familiar with. I was just running npm install to get the latest versions of different libraries, and when that didn't work, I was breaking into the configuration files and trying to see if I could fix things there, and when that didn't work, I turned to the corners of the internet and didn't really find much that was helpful for getting me unstuck in this particular case. And I think a lot of programmers experience the same type of frustration. But if there's any solace to this experience, it's that it's really nice to be able to realize that you're always going to be learning something new and that even if you are failing technically with your project, there is small parts of the experience that you're going to be able to take into your future works and nothing is really just a holy failure of a project when it comes to programming and engineering. In other words, it's important to realize that frustration should not kill the scientific instinct inside of you, the idea to hypothesize and to try new things and to create new things. Creating new things adds a spice to life that only creators can really feel and the feeling of making something new and learning along the way is what makes the experience worth it so that's the video thank you for watching if you would like to check out my app you can see stenography in the link below which i guess this video is sponsored by my own business and have a great day